Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Cowart, research psychologist and research director for Take This. I am here powered by League Spot to talk to you today about esports. Competitive video gameplay, also referred to as esports, has come a long way from its humble origins in local arcades and internet cafes. Today, video games are a multi-billion dollar global industry that is bigger than the music, movie, and television industries combined. Esports makes up a large proportion of that, earning more than $1 billion a year. There are hundreds of local esports clubs and over 450 collegiate teams, with more than 100 of these teams offering scholarships for esports. This can form the foundation of a potentially lucrative career as first place prizes in professional esports tournaments are upwards of millions of dollars. However, despite the growth of esports, there are still a lot of lingering questions. Is esports really a sport? Does it come with benefits or is it just another excuse for more screen time? What about violence and addiction? Let's answer some of those questions. What is esports? Esports is organized competitive video gameplay. It's like traditional sports, but digital. Any game that can be played competitively can be played in esports. The most popular titles tend to be fast paced and require a lot of the same skills that are required to excel in traditional sports quick reflexes, hand-eye coordination, precision, strategy, and teamwork. Although there are some exceptions, fun fact, chess is actually one of the most popular titles in esports. What are the benefits of esports? Research has found esports comes with many of the same benefits as traditional sports. And as with traditional sports, many of these benefits are unintentional. That is, these benefits are an unintentional consequence of participating in these activities. Let's take a bit of a closer look at some of these benefits. Teamwork. Teamwork is the ability to work together with others to contribute towards a group goal. Working together on any team builds various skills, friendship, patience, conflict resolution, listening and communication skills, and leadership. Self-regulation. Self-regulation is the ability to follow rules even when you don't want to. We all have to follow certain rules to remain on any team and esports is no different. This might mean following group practice schedules, practicing on our own time to keep up our skills, following others lead or switching into a leadership role ourselves, among other self-regulation skills. Problem solving. Problem solving is the ability to come up with solutions to problems. While this might seem pretty straightforward, it often involves having to think creatively to think outside the box. Any team sport requires us to come up with creative solutions to solve problems because the other team is trying to win and we have to out strategize them. Esports is no different. Confidence. Just like traditional sports, success in esports increases one's belief in their ability to achieve other things. As one's level of competency, skill, and mastery grows, both in game and when interacting with other members of their team, confidence grows proportionally stronger. Friendship. Friendships that are formed and solidified around shared playful activities, like esports, have been found to be particularly close and long lasting. Participating in esports in your local community club or school not only provides the opportunity to increase your engagement with your fellow students and your broader community, but also provides the foundation for lifelong friendships. The cool thing is that research has found that practicing these skills in game benefits out of game situations. How many employers look for creative thinkers that work well with other people? If you said all of them, you'd be right. So those are the benefits, but what about the concerns people have about gaming and screen time? Unlike more active or traditional sports, aren't esports just more sedentary screen time? It is true that games can be largely sedentary, which is why it's important that esports is just one of many things that we do. It's important to get up, stretch, and move our body both during the day, but also to break up our gaming sessions. And it turns out that regular exercise also makes us better at gaming. So to be the best gamer we could be, we should be moving our bodies regularly. Another concern is about violence. Don't violent video games make people violent? Concerns about violence are one of the most common concerns that I hear, especially from parents and teachers who see children getting angry during gameplay. An important thing to remember that what is often perceived as anger from the outside is often an expression of frustration. Short-term outbursts of frustration are very common in all team competitive sports, including esports. That's very different from a long-term pattern of violent behavior. 
That said, I'm sure you'll be relieved to hear there is no scientific evidence to indicate that exposure to violent media, including video games, leads to patterns of violent behavior. But what about addiction? Aren't games addictive? There is a lot of concern that video games are addictive. The term addiction is a bit of a sticky term because what most people mean when they use that word is that a person is engaging in the same behavior over and over. The problem is there are a lot of reasons that a person can engage in repetitive patterns of behavior that have nothing to do with what we consider an addiction in a clinical sense. For example, autistic folks or those with ADHD can hyperfocus for long periods of time and video games provide a great vehicle for that. Similarly, people with anxiety can engage in repetitive patterns of behavior to soothe their symptoms. This doesn't mean their behavior is an addiction in a clinical sense. This isn't to say some people can't use games in a way that has negative impacts. They absolutely can. But this is a multifaceted issue and can be reduced under the umbrella term of addiction. In fact, new research shows that problematic use of games has more to do with underlying mental health struggles than the games themselves. If you or somebody you know are using video games in a way that is negatively impacting your life, I would advise reaching out for mental health support and mental health resources. A good place to start is takethis.org resources. Just like any activity, we should balance esports with other interests, healthy lifestyles, and in-person socializing with our family and friends. For more information about mental health and video games, visit takethis.org. Now keep calm and game on.